Hello and welcome to the Luminous Fiber Arts Floss Dude channel. I am Misty Purcell. I am a cross stitch designer and um, I love to design cute things that will make you smile as you stitch them and after you finish them. I am excited to be here today um, to talk to you about my mystery stitch along which is coming up this summer um, but I'll be opening up pre-orders soon and so that's why I wanted to announce it now. So if this is your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Um, I have been doing mystery stitch alongs for three years now. This will be my fourth year doing a mystery stitch along. And I think they're so much fun. Um, there's a lot of reasons why I think mystery stitch alongs are fun. I know that they're not for everyone. Like some people don't like surprises. Um, but if you're the kind of person who does like a surprise, I think that you'll enjoy this one. Um, this year's stitch along is going to be a Halloween mystery stitch along and the design is called It's Halloween and it's a super cute design. Um, I only design very cute Halloween there's, and, and slightly spooky, but there's nothing very scary or gross or ugly about the Halloween that I do because I just think the world needs to be cuter and I'm going to make it that way one stitch at a time and I'm going to help you do that too. So it's cute Halloween. Um, it has some traditional Halloween characters. You'll find some jack-o'-lanterns, there might be a black cat, some other Halloween creatures, uh, and there's four different scenes. Um, each scene is a rectangle and these scenes can be stitched separately or together. Uh, the model has all four scenes stitched together and framed, um, but you could break them apart and stitch them separately, possibly as ornaments. It depends on um, what size you would want your ornaments to be. You could go down to like a, a higher, you could go down to a lower fabric count and do over one. You could go up to a higher count and do over two. You could just go with bigger ornaments. It kind of depends on what your needs are. Um, they might be big. I mean, they'd be bigger than like what I would say an average ornament is. Um, let me tell you some dimensions and information. Um, which I don't remember, obviously, so I have to look it up. All right, so each section, if you're stitching it on 32 count, which is what the model was stitched on, is going to be 5.2 inches wide by 3.4 inches high. So as I said, maybe a bit big for ornaments, but that depends on you um, and what you like. Could also just be a cute little, you could make it like a flat ornament or a pillow ornament and hang it somewhere that's not on a tree if it'd be too big for your tree. Um, I think they would just make awesome little pillows like a bowl filler. They'd be super cute like that too. So lots of possibilities. It just depends on what you want to do with your decorating. Um, we're going to be using a mix of over dyed floss and DMC. It's a limited color palette for this stitch along. So we've got Classic Color Works is the uh, over dyed floss. We've got Sassy Brass. Got honeycomb and blackbird. Um, for the stitch along, I'd recommend two skeins of blackbird for 32 count. You'll need that. If you're doing 28 count, um, you'll probably want a third skein of blackbird, I, I'm guessing. Uh, and then there's a few skeins of DMC. So we've got Blanc 3826, which is kind of a aged orange and then 976 which is a little bit of a yellow or orange so this is our palette very very pretty uh, there's not like a good way to show you i've got photos <laughs> um so anyway cute design great floss colors let's talk about the other supplies um we're going to be using affogato by fiber on a whim this is a really pretty fabric and the linen was used in the model. The model, which I can't show you, was beautifully stitched by Sandy Alba. Thank you, Sandy. You'll see the model eventually as the stitch along progresses. You'll see the, you'll be, you'll be solving the mystery and unlocking the secrets of what it actually looks like. Um, but we'll be using affogato for the stitch along. So um, if you want to choose your own fabric, then you're looking for a neutral. Well, you don't have to even do a neutral. We were discussing it in Instagram Live the other day. We were talking about purple possibilities, so purple is a possibility. But um, if you wanna go with something kind of like what I did, 
then you want a neutral. Um, this is, I would, has some like kind of yellowish undertones to it. So it's a little bit more on the warmer side and um, needs to show white because we've got some white going on. Wonder what could be white in a Halloween design. Can you guess? <laughs> anyway, um, so that's something to think about as well. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to tell you? Um, I'm going to be offering supplies for the stitch along and um, let me tell you what I'm going to have. I'm going to have the floss packs, the pattern, and the fabric available to pre-order. The pattern is a PDF digital download. That's how the clues are delivered. Sorry, there is no print option because they, it would be very expensive to ship you five or four different patterns um, separately, which is how it would be. Um, so it'll just be a PDF and you're going to get the border clue immediately when you purchase. Um, you can download that right away if you want, or you can wait until the stitch along starts. And then um, the fabric, you can choose from 32 and 36 count linen from Fiber on a Whim Affogato, um, 16 and 18 count Ada, and 28 and 32 count Lugana. So I have six, six possible options for you. Floss packs will include the over dyed floss, two skeins of blackbird, plus sassy brass and honeycomb. And then in the drop down menu, there's an option if you want to throw in an extra skein of blackbird because you're thinking of stitching this on 14 or 28 count, then you can add that to your cart as well. Um, I want to mention that if you decide you do want to stitch these separately and finish them separately, so you, you know, you'd be cutting them apart, not stitching them all together the way that the model is, there should be enough fabric to do that even on a 28 count. Um, and I've got a little diagram in the pattern download in the welcome. There's like two downloads you'll get when you buy the pattern. There's the border clue and then there's like a little welcome message. And in the welcome message, I've got a little diagram of how you can lay it out on 32 count and then you just change the margin slightly for 28 count. So if you do 28 count, um, you'll get about two inch margins with some extra fabric and a little bit of like the end of the fabric. Um, but I've got a diagram there to help you lay it out if you're not sure how to do that. Um, and I think too, if you are gonna finish it as pillows, one thing that I think could look really cool, well, there's a lot of things that could look really cool. One thing I keep thinking about is black mini pom-pom trim around the outside edge of a pillow, but also like maybe some black lace could be pretty cool. Black rickrack, I mean, I don't know. There's like so many possibilities. The pom-pom trim is just sticking in my head for some reason is like, I don't know. I might try that myself. I'm thinking about stitching it either on, I think I'm gonna do one, during the stitch along, I think I'm probably gonna do one scene and either do it on 40 count or over one just for kicks. Cause you know, I, I like tiny things. If you've been around here for a while, you know, I like to knit tiny things and I do like to stitch some tiny things as well. So I think um, a really, a really tiny small would be fun. So I might do that. I don't think I have time to stitch more than just one, but I would like to stitch one during the stitch along. So that's my hope is that I can do one and maybe do pom-pom trim on it. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm not promising anything. I'm just hopeful. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see what else is in my notes. Um, oh, the pattern does include a conversion to DMC. I always include that. So if you want to use DMC or pull other things that are in your stash, you can do that. Um, and I am offering the pattern fabric and floss separately, uh, so that you can just buy what you need. So if you only need the pattern, you can just pre-order that. If you only need the pattern and fabric, you can just get those. If you only need the pattern and the floss, you can just get those, or you can get all three things if that's what you need. So everything is separate to make it easier for you. So let me tell you about how pre-orders work. So as I said, you'll be, when you purchase the pattern, it's a pre-order and the border clue and the welcome information is available. The stitch along won't be starting until July. Um, so you're pre-ordering the pattern and getting the border right away, but the rest of the clues won't be available until July. The pre-order for the fabric and floss then, um, I'm anticipating those to ship at the beginning of July from me to you. Um, so I'm opening up pre-orders now to give our dyers enough time to dye everything, ship it to me, and then me to get it to you in time to start the stitch along. Um, if you're purchasing then a pre-order item and you're purchasing anything else that's not pre-order, 
from my website, everything will ship together once your pre-order items are in stock. So please be aware of that. If there's something you're also wanting to buy that you need sooner, make that a separate purchase so that um, you're not waiting. So as I said, I'm anticipating the beginning of July would be the ship date for the pre-ordered fabric and floss. And the stitch along will start on July 15th when the first clue launches. That will be the top, uh, top left rectangle. And then the next Monday, so they'll be released on Mondays for four weeks total. Uh, the next clue will be on July 22nd. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'll be the top right rectangle. And then we've got July 29th, bottom left, and August 5th, bottom right rectangle. And then that will be the finished piece. So it starts mid-July and goes through the beginning of August. Um, please don't feel pressured to finish it at the beginning of August. Uh, we're starting it with enough time that you, assuming you don't have other things going on, that you can finish it in time for this Halloween and have it on display, but there's no obligation to do so. You know, if you buy the pattern and, and you find that you can't finish the whole thing, that's okay too. Like whatever you need to do is fine. Um, don't feel pressured. This is supposed to be fun. So just join the stitch along for the fun of it. Um, and you know, I think the, some of the reasons to join a stitch along are the, the feeling of community as you're stitching with people from around the world, which has been the case with our stitch alongs. I'm so appreciative to have people stitching from all over the world. Uh, when we do stitch alongs. It's so exciting to me. Um, and you get to be, when you're doing a mystery stitch along, you get to be one of the first people to even see what it looks like and to see each section. You get to be one of the first people to stitch it. So it's pretty exciting. You're solving a mystery. You're watching each piece be revealed. Like the only people who have seen what this looks like are me and Sandy. <laughs> so <laughs> we're the only ones who know. Uh, so you get to be in on the secret, which is really fun. Um, you know, I think too, I mean, I enjoy surprises, so I think that kind of thing is fun and being, you know, able to stitch with other people, to get encouraged by them and to encourage them as well. There's a lot of inspiration as people share stuff on, um, social media. You can see how people are changing fabric and floss colors. Maybe they're adding some things to personalize it, how they're finishing. It's really fun. Um, Friendships have been made in the past, which I think is so cool. So the mystery stitch along hashtag will be it's Halloween Sal. So please use that when you're sharing like your supplies that you're going to be using for the stitch along and any progress that you want to share online. Please follow the hashtag so you can see what others are doing and share them on. Um, yeah, I think I think stitch alongs are just so much fun and I always look forward to doing this every year. So um, thanks for anyone who has participated in the past and I hope you're excited for this year's stitch along. Um, there's a few other things I want to mention. Well, here's a pretty important thing. It's a good thing I have notes. Uh, this mystery stitch along pre-order is open for one week only, which is different from things I've done in the past. So it's open now, April 5th at 5 p.m. is the opening time. It's open now until April 12th. April 12th will be the closing date. So by end of day on April 12th, um, I'll be closing it down after that. So um, you might sneak in under the wire if you order it at like 3 a.m. on Saturday morning. I'm not going to be up that early shutting it off, but, but I'll be shutting it off Saturday morning when I wake up, okay? So official deadline is end of day, April 12th. Maybe you can sneak in under the wire, but I'm, it's only for a week that you can get the pattern or fabric or floss. After that, I won't be offering them again for... The, the pattern is going to be exclusive to the Stitch Along for at least a year. As a thank you to the Stitch Along participants for joining in, I want to make it special for you. So it's only available to people who purchase it during the pre-order window for at least a year. When I do exclusives like that, um, a year is usually the minimum. It can be longer, um, but, a, but a year minimum for sure. And so if you want to get the fabric floss and pattern this year, then the one week window is your chance, okay? Um, and I'm not anticipating needing to cut anything off sooner unless something crazy happens. I've talked with Fiber on a whim and they are prepared to dye what you need. Um, so I don't think you need to, to panic, but um, I would say don't put it off uh, in case you forget. I will um, send out a reminder. I'll put out some reminders out there. 
Um, but I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna be really fun. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got some flair here. This says Halloween ambassador, which I am because I love Halloween. And I bought this just for this video. I'm, I'll be wearing it again in the future for sure. But when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I need that for the video. So luckily it came just in time. And then on the back, um, it says Halloween forever, 1031. And there's like a little infinity symbol under it. It's by, um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, Rode Montijo. Um, and he is a really cool artist I follow on social media. Um, he does some really cool art that I love. I love his style. And he does these um, draw alongs where you draw stuff in your style. I've talked about it before, um, if you've been here for a while. He'll post um, an image, like a vintage image usually, often Halloween related because apparently he loves Halloween as much as I do. Um, and then people will post their version, how they drew it online and he'll share some of their things and they, you can share it to like a hashtag so anyway he's really fun I'm really glad he made this I'm happy to have a medal and be an ambassador I'm official okay <laughs> um okay what else is there anything else I think the only thing I want to mention is just like how the downloads work so for the pattern pre-order and anytime you buy a digital pattern um, it's kind of the same thing, but specifically with this pre-order. So when you're checking out, on your checkout confirmation page after you've paid, it's not easy to see. I don't know if this is something I can edit, but right at the top of the window, it says that your downloads are available and there's a little link. So you don't even have to leave your checkout page to start downloading your pattern. Then you also get an email and it will also have a link, but it doesn't have the file in the pat or in the email. It's separate. So you click on the link and it will take you to the site to download the pattern. Um, and then when you when a new clue is released, um, I'll send out an email that morning. Clues will post by 9 a.m. Um, and then you'll get an email update saying there's an update to your order and then it'll have a download link. If something happens and that email doesn't somehow make it to your inbox, if you still have your original email, you can access it still that way if you want to. Um, yeah, so don't worry if you don't get an email, it doesn't mean like you missed it. I mean, you didn't miss the clue, but somehow maybe it went to your spam or something. Um, you can still access the clues from any of the emails. If you get emails one through three and you don't get the fourth one or something, you can still download it from any of the previous emails because the link is just taking you to where the files are. So an old link will work. Um, and then if all else fails, contact me. I will make sure that you get your pattern. Um, but there's lots of ways to get your pattern, so don't don't sweat it. What else can I tell you? Um, it's really, really cute. I'm so excited about it. I think you're going to really like it. It's got some uh, a little bit of words in each scene with a fun, whimsical font. And I just think it's super adorable. I love the frame that I picked out for it. It looks really great. It's kind of a rustic blackish brown frame. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be so much fun. So I hope that you'll be joining us for the stitch along. Again, pre-orders are open now through officially April 12th. Um, so this is your chance to join us. Don't miss out on the opportunity to solve a fun mystery and stitch something really cute for Halloween this year. So I hope you're as excited about the stitch along as I am. It's really cute. I think we're going to have a blast. Please head over to www.luminousfiberarts.com and you can place your pre-order for the digital PDF pattern, the fabric, and the floss, um, or whichever combination you need of them. So thanks for hanging out with me while I shared the info about the mystery stitch along. I wanted to tell you a little bit about how market went because I haven't been here in a little while. Um, so just a little market recap. Market was awesome. If you don't know, Nashville Needlework Market is a trade show for cross-stitch industry people, people who design dye fabrics and flosses and other things, products, anything related to cross-stitch. Um, it's a, a show where needlework shops can go and buy what's new and take it home to you. So I went to do that in March and um, it was a great show. I had a lot of fun seeing everyone. It's 
awesome, it's exhausting, it's all of the things. <laughs> uh, it's a long drive, but it was really fun and a great show. Um, and it went really smoothly. The weather was okay going down there. Um, we had some rainstorms, but nothing, nothing too horrible. And um, yeah, I mean, I actually was so... Like, I'm not sure. I think part of it was that, well, I did tweak some things. Every year I kind of look at like, what do I think I could do differently to make it better? And then I do it if I can. So there were some things that I changed. And so I was like so prepared that I actually had some downtime before the show started for like the first time ever. <laughs> and I was like able to grade some papers while I was gone. And yeah, it was great. Um, and I did a little sketching. Um, yeah, it just went really smooth. I didn't, I felt like last year went so smoothly. I didn't think this year could go any better, but it really did. So that was just awesome. Uh, I feel like now that I've done this for four years, I'm starting to get the hang of generally what I need to do to make it happen. And it's not so overwhelming as it used to be, uh, which is great. And yeah, it was lovely seeing people. Um, so nice to catch up with them. I thought I was going to take all these pictures, but I'm not good at that one. And two, um, we were using my phone as a hotspot during the show, which meant that if I ever left my room, I didn't have my phone with me. So the only photo I got was my, my annual Barbie Helen Misty photo. We, we managed that. And I think that's like the only market photo I had of like me with friends at the show. So I don't know what I can do about that. Get like a, a real camera. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but yeah, it was great. And, um, I got to go to, so we, we stayed an extra day after the show, which was really nice. We started doing that last year and it was great. So we um, spent a day on Monday going around and doing some fun things that we didn't have time to do before. And we went to um, this art supply store that I had been following online. And I just checked one day to see where they were because I thought, well, maybe someday I'll be traveling through. And little did I know I would be because it's Nashville. So this is called, it has two names. John Neal Books is pretty much, I think, their like website name. And they aren't selling books. They're selling book making supplies. Um, but they're also called, is it paper, paper and ink? I don't know. Like, I'll, I'll post a photo. I think it's called paper and ink. That's maybe their storefront name. I'm not quite sure how it works. But anyway, that's where we went. And it was like so awesome, like full of art supplies they're really into calligraphy, so there's tons of calligraphy, calligraphy stuff there. There was a room where there were, like, racks of different kinds of paper. Oh, it was so good. And Cynthia was, like, cursing me for taking her there, but I was really happy. <laughs> it was awesome. And they had a lot of things I was looking for, which was fun. So I got some new art supplies to try out. We also went to a um, bookstore. Um, and I feel like we went somewhere else. Then we got massages, which was also awesome. And um, yeah, it was just great. And then on the way back, <laughs> the rain was really heavy, but we managed to get into Columbus with enough time to go to the Dick Blick there, which is another art store. And I've been to the Dick Blick in Pittsburgh. It's the only one I've been to. The one in Columbus was also oh, amazing. So that was a great way to end the trip. We stayed the night in Columbus and then came back the next day. I came home with a lot of art supplies. I came home with some fabric, some patterns. It was a it was a good a good trip for uh, stitching and art supply haul. Uh, so yeah, it was really really fun. Um, and so I'll include some footage from the show for you uh, in case you're interested in seeing kind of my some of my preparations, a little bit of our our trip and setup and things like that. Um, and then I'll pop back on at the end just to give you a little bit of a life update, a little bit of what I've been up to lately. Sorry, I forgot I have some haul to show you first. So let me do that real quick. Uh, in case you enjoy seeing new cross-stitch supplies, which I think most people do, hopefully. Got a stack of fabric here that's going to fall off my lap. Um, so Weeks came out with some new colors. I think they're awesome. Uh, I can really see myself using this red, um, the gray and probably this pretty 
kind of pinkish toned off white. The green also might be a possibility to just depend on the design, but I think the red and the gray, like these three for sure will be happening soon. The red is so awesome. I can't have enough reds. <laughs> so floss companies can keep releasing reds like every year. I'll be happy. What I would love is if they would release more oranges because of the Halloween fanatic, it's hard to find the right oranges. Uh, so weeks. Then um, I stopped at Forbidden Fiber and picked up some fabric. I'll be putting like some of this in my shop. Like I'll be taking some for myself for designing, but then I'll put some in my shop. So this is a, some new colors. I um, can't remember if all of these are new colors. I think most of them are. This is Vintage Doily, which is kind of a gray with a slight pinkish purple tone, which is really cool. This is a 32 count linen. Um, I've got Babbling Brook, which is a really pretty blue. Is it better if I take it out of the bag? At least part of the way. Yeah, really pretty. Nice soft blue would be great for any kind of beach stitching. Um, Christmas stitching, the white would show up well. Then, this is a great, I wish I had dyed this because it's so good. But I'm glad they did because I don't have time. <laughs> this is Bungalow. And this is a brown gray, which I love brown gray. And I think it's hard to find. This would be so good for any Halloween project. I love this. I will be, I am sure, incorporating this into something soon because it's so good. I just, if you'd asked me for like what color do I want, it would have been this. So props to them. I love it. Then we've got some brighter colors. This is like a 90s thing they were doing, which was kind of fun. So we've got electric, which is a, a brighter blue. That's really pretty. Again, that could be good for like Christmas or beach themed stuff. Really would show up white, white really nicely. Show off white really nicely. And this green, I'm... I'm fond of green, if you can't tell from what I'm wearing here. I like like a kind of minty green color, kind of jade-ity. This is called Cucumber Melon, which is a really pretty color. and kind of coordinates with what I'm wearing today. Um, not too surprising. So I think this would be, well, you could use it for something like St. Patrick's Day. I would use it for Christmas because I really like green fabric for Christmas. I think it has lots of other possibilities too, but... I would lean towards Christmas for this one myself. Really, really pretty color. So that's the, some of the fabric I picked up. Um, I need to order some fabric from some people as well. Uh, but I did pick up some other fabric from Fiber on a Whim. So they had a little bundle of new colors. Um, so we've got a Malachite. This is a really pretty kind of emerald green color. Um, Moonstone, that's really nice. I like that a lot. Kind of similar to Affogato, uh, but I would say it's yellower. Affogato's got a little bit more of a pinkish yellow undertone. This is more yellow, yellow, I would say. Golden yellow undertone. Very pretty. Super useful pro uh, color for your projects. Nice neutral. This is Sapphire, which is a really pretty dark blue. And so those were the new colors. I picked up a couple other colors. I picked up Earth, which I think would be great for like a project if you want to do something Christmassy, like a gingerbread, which is on my mind. Um, really nice color. So I picked that up. And then this wheat color is really nice too. Kind of reminds me um, of some fabric that I used to dye called opulence kind of a similar feel to it and I tend to like kind of golds for some things including Christmas although not exclusively Christmas I think fall and Halloween would look really good on this too so picked those up and um then I was at um needlework press their booth picked up a few vintage things thanks to Teresa Vinette for tipping me off <laughs> to go there. Um, so I've got some like little vintage spools to be photo props, floss winder, and then I thought 
that this would be good for photo props as well. So not necessarily that I'm going to be using them, although I might use this for something, but you know, my idea was mainly like for fun stuff for my my, my model photos. So I, I have some patterns, but I put them away. So unfortunately I don't have those to show. Um, but I received some gifts. So my birthday is coming up at the end of April and Helen and Barbie were on it <laughs> at Nashville. So they brought me birthday gifts. Um, so Helen's such this adorable little bunny. So I've been waiting and not eating these, Helen. I've been good, but it won't last long. How adorable is that? Such a cute finish. And then she's got a little needle minder here on the back. It's so cool. This is Helen D. And then um, she got me this awesome like shaker box pin cushion and she made the pins for it. It's so pretty. This is from Early American Woodshop and Studio with the William Morris fabric. So pretty. So thank you, Helen, for the lovely birthday gifts. And then Barbie also, as I said, was on it and gave me birthday gifts. So I got this gorgeous fabric from Color and Cotton on a Lugana. It's called Haunted. It's a gray that tends towards purple. So pretty. Look at the nice modeling on that. It's not easy to get good modeling on Lugana. It doesn't like to cooperate so much. So it's very nice. And then look at this adorable project bag that Barbie gave me. This was made by Carrie Sews For You. So, so cute. So thank you so much, Barbie. This is like perfect for me as someone who loves needlework supplies and collecting them and such. So yeah, that's my market haul. Now I can show you what I did at market. Time to get on the road for needlework market. First, I have to go to work though. So I'm walking to class. I'm gonna get some storms. Hopefully I'm not walking or driving in them too much, but I'm excited to get on our way to Columbus today. This is my destination today. I'm all done teaching people. It's currently not raining. Time to go pick up Cynthia. Get on our way to Columbus. So it's Thursday. We're on our way to Nashville. When we left this morning at 7.30 from Columbus, it said a little over six hours. It is now a little over six hours later and somehow we still have two hours to go. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. We are in a time vortex somewhere in Kentucky. Please help us get out. We're not sure if we're ever gonna make it to Nashville. And if we do, it might be midnight. Okay, we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know if we ever make it. All right, well, we did in fact emerge from the vortex. We are here in the room and I am setting up. It is, what time is it? It's five o'clock. Feels like 10 o'clock. I'm gonna keep going though. Wanna watch me work? Good morning. It's Friday, day of the show opening. It's the morning. Got everything set up. Uh, you won't be surprised to learn <laughs> that I've got a remote for my lights. If you watch my videos, you know how much I love remote controls for lights. So all of the, let me turn this around here if I can. All of the lights are remote controlled, which is just so awesome. Can I tell you how much I love this? <laughs> nope, here we go. Let me, let me try that again. Okay. Okay. Ta-da! So this is what it's looking like in here. Let me give you a little tour. So here we have Santa stack and he is stacked adorably on his reindeer. He is actually an acrobat in the off season when he's not delivering gifts. So you can see he's got his packages balanced on one hand and he's got a candy cane in the other and he's balancing on one leg on his reindeer, which is no problem because it is a magical reindeer. 
And here we have Wintergreen Christmas. And so these three ornaments, we have uh, Santa, he is laughing and saying ho, 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 and waving. We have our cute reindeer with a smile on his face. I don't know if you can see that there. And then we have a forest of pine trees. Super cute trio of ornaments. And we have American Eagle coverlet. This was inspired by some weaving motifs, some of which came from coverlets, some of which just came from weaving in general. And I'm a weaver, so I enjoy taking inspiration from my other hobbies as well, like quilting and knitting. Here is Liberty Glory Unity. This is part of my seasonal trio series. It's the last design in the series. And in the series, each design shares a letter in the stack of three. So Liberty, Glory, Unity, all share the letter Y. Then we have Hop, Peep, Leap over here. They all share the letter P in this stack. We have Sneaky, Spooky Spells sharing uh, S. And then we have Jingle Jolly Joy sharing a J. So one for every season, and you could stitch these as ornaments separately. You could stitch them together vertically or horizontally, and they'll look great either way. So that's the side over here. And then let's move on over here. So we have Autumn's Acorns, and we have the Rust version, and then we have the Dark Chocolate version. I think People have been letting me know whether they're Team Rust or Team Dark Chocolate. It seems like it's almost even, but a slight preference for the Rust. And this version has pins, has some rayon ribbon and a charm, and then this version is framed. Lots of options for how you could finish and display this one. Here I've gathered the Gathering series together. So it's getting kind of huge, like I'm, I'm having trouble fitting it into the video here. So we have Gathering berries, gathering honey, gathering clover, the new design, gathering violets, we have gathering stitches, gathering acorns, gathering snowflakes. Here they are all together again. And then over here we have Sweet Love, which is a Valentine's design celebrating love. With two cute little birds gazing lovingly into each other's eyes. And there you have it. So, quick life update. Um, things are going well. I am, in addition to a cross-stitch designer, I am a college Spanish professor. We are nearing the end of the semester. I have three weeks left and I think we're all happy about that. It's been a good semester. I have great students. Uh, I really enjoy them, but we're all tired and I worked on my spring break at market. So I'm, I need a break. I'm ready for a break and my students are too. So um, yeah, the semester is coming to a close, but I think it's going well, wrapping up well and quickly. Um, it's, spring in Pennsylvania, which can mean anything, but right now it's uh, a lot of rain and then it's going to be like in the 60s next week, which I'm all about that. And um, I've got some other exciting design things in the works. I can't tell you about them just yet, but soon you'll be hearing more about some upcoming things uh, that I'm really excited about. So lots of exciting things coming from Luminous Fiber Arts in the near future. Uh, lastly, I haven't had time to stitch. I'm hoping to get back to some stitching soon. And I have not felt like I could weave or do much of anything else. The only thing I've done creatively is sketching. Um, and it's not that I actually like couldn't weave or, or do other things. It just felt like my brain couldn't handle that many different tasks, even if they're not that hard. So I just accept that there are seasons in my life where there's too much going on for me to do that many different things. And I let them be until my brain can handle it. So I've been sketching. Um, I have been learning to, uh, I've been learning to draw, like taking drawing classes on and off for 
I don't know, maybe two years now, year and a half, something like that. And then um, like on, on my iPad, on actual paper, I've taken some different classes online. Um, I've not taken an in-person class ever. And I've been learning since last summer or last spring to do watercolor, which has been really fun. And I've taken um, some really great classes online that I can recommend to you if that's something you're interested in. And the biggest thing I wanna say before I show you anything is, is just that um, it's really not about talent. Uh, it's it, like talent maybe means that someone has a certain amount of facility to do something. Maybe it comes a little easier to them than the average person. But I, I think that could be true with maybe anything. But I mean, drawing and painting, it's like thinking that you should be able to sit down at a piano and play a song without anyone ever teaching you how. I think maybe because you always have access to crayons and markers as a kid, you feel that you should be able to draw. But if no one's teaching you how to draw, why should you be able to do that? Like, I, I shouldn't be able to, unless I'm a prodigy and I can go to a piano and pick out a song. Um, you know, I don't think that the average person expects to walk up to a piano and to be able to play. And if they're not, then they're like, well, I can't play piano. So don't think that you can't draw just because you never learned or because you took one class and it didn't go well. Um, it takes a while. Like I'm, I've been working on this really hard for a while and I still draw stuff that looks terrible, <laughs> but I have good days, thankfully. And so I've been having a lot of fun with it. So what I'm doing is I am mainly learning how to sketch my life, I would say, and learning how to just be a better artist, uh, which I think benefits my cross stitch and benefits my, my soul. So, um, the watercolor stuff has been great. Uh, it's, it's a tricky medium and I enjoy it. So uh, the classes I've been taking are things like um, how to sketch teacups and just how to sketch in general, more, more towards like urban sketching, but not solely urban sketching, kind of a mix of sketching like your, indoors, your indoor things, life slash outdoor things. Um, and so, I'm, I'm keeping a journal basically of like my days and I'm not super consistent about it. I'm getting better as I have more time and I'm just drawing like random stuff that I see. So I thought I'd share it with you in case you're interested because I think it's really fun and I encourage you if you're at all interested in taking up drawing that you do it because it's so cool. And I think the thing that helps to take the pressure off of the perfectionism that we all feel and believe me, I feel it just as much as you. Um, but if you're thinking of it as... But the point is like to keep a record of your life and the record doesn't have to be perfect. It's just, this is where you are at, at that moment, literally, and in your art journey, right? Your ability to sketch and paint and things, and you're going to have bad days and that's okay. You're just documenting and it's really fun um, to do that. And then to see how you progress. Like this is some stuff I did last summer for the first time in the sketchbook. I wasn't used to it and it's not at all good. I mean, it's kind of a mess. I didn't know what I was doing. I couldn't handle the paint to water ratio. It's very, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not good, but it's not bad. It's just what I could do with the sketchbook, with the skills I had last August. <laughs> but then I gave it another try because I was curious. I went back to it in November and I'd like learned some things since August. And so it turned out a lot better. I just had to play around with how does this sketchbook work and every paper is different. Um, this is some, uh, sweet potato pie I made, <laughs> and this is my little kitty cat pen holder. And then I sketched some leaves in the fall, and this is Barnes and Noble before Christmas. You can see the Grinch sign, which I loved. So, you know, I think this turned out okay. I'm lucky that guy stayed there so long. I took a photo just in case he left. Um, Barnes and Noble is really hard for me to sketch. I think this turned out pretty well. It's a little overworked, but it's fine. This was a tutorial I followed. I think that's fine. You know, I'm learning. This is a chimney twist, which oh, is so good. So the, um, they make them on these, they're, they're, I think they're maybe Eastern European. I'm not sure. Um, but they're like, do no, maybe they're German. I don't know, whatever. They're, they're dough that's wrapped around kind of like a rolling pin type thing. And 
don't know if they steam cook it, I don't remember, but then they add like sugar and cinnamon, which I couldn't figure out how to add. So you can see that there, you can't tell there's any sugar and cinnamon on this because I didn't know how to do it. Uh, but it was the last chimney twist I'm gonna have from them because they're moving out to like Minnesota. So if you live in Minnesota, you might be able to get it, but I, as far as I know, can't get these anymore. This is my Christmas morning breakfast, my coffee and my cookies, which was really fun to document. And you can see here, I can't remember if I showed these pictures before. This layer was supposed to be, one of these layers was supposed to be green. And my natural food coloring that I bought doesn't make things green, makes them kind of a pukey yellow. I think I might've showed the snowman. This was a mug my mom has. And then I know I showed you the ornament Helen gave me. Or no, no, that was from my Jingle Ball class student. And then here are Helen and Barbie's ornaments. This is a Santa mug I got after Christmas. Um, I'm really into Style House Santa. So I got a little set of mugs. This was another tutorial that I followed on making gingerbread cookies. This is a rabbit I got. Um, it's right there, you can't, let's see. There he is, right there. So he is called Lapan Ficelle. That's like a rabbit string or I think is a translation, but basically there's a little hole. It's like a twine holder. It's a little hole you put your scissors. There's a little hole in his mouth for the twine to come out. And then there's an opening in the back where you can put the, the twine. And I've been like wanting one of these for years and I just didn't know how to look it up. Finally found it and got one. Came from France. Uh, here's another attempt at Barnes and Noble. This time I didn't sketch the background just to see what would happen. Here are some decorations for Christmas I was thinking of donating, but I liked them so much after I sketched them, I just like to keep them. Uh, it's a cupcake that I was practicing sketching on a plate belonging to my great grandma. Teacup, I've been sketching a lot of teacups, so I took a teacup course last summer. Um, so practicing that. These are some orchids I got for Valentine's Day. It's a gift, uh, another cupcake. I like cupcakes. This was my teacup again. This time I sketched it without any setup. So I did it, was it absolutely no setup? Yeah, paint only. So I just tried to paint it directly, which is hard. Um, Barnes and Noble once again. Uh, more tea. Snowdrops, first snowdrops I saw. Uh, so that's like late February, so it was fun to document. Uh, the only thing I don't like about the sketchbook, I like actually the landscape a lot, but I feel like there's not like a lot of room to write. So I think I need a different sketchbook shape. I'm thinking maybe a square. It's a teacup I got that was new to me. It's a vintage one. I'm enjoying collecting vintage teacups. I kind of messed up the shadow shape here. I should have put the gray down first because then all my paint moved, but I'm learning. Some cookies I froze from Christmas and ate <laughs> in March. And this is a teacup I bought like 20 years ago. It's hard to believe it's been that long, um, but I hadn't used it in a while, so I got it out. And I love the ladybug on the teacup. It's a Lennox cup, because it's like the tea, the ladybug is escaping my tea. I was playing around with some water soluble, I, I say crayons, but I know normal people say crayons. Uh, so these are water, water soluble Neo Color 2 is what they're called. So they're like a wax based one that you can wet. And so I was playing around with some tulips I bought and trying to use those. I like the texture that they give. I find doing this kind of greenery and figuring out how to do the shading really difficult. So I don't feel like I know what I'm doing there. Um, I took another class. This was with Roshan Kure. Um, she was teaching how to do wood grain. I think this turned out really well. I was sketching my table and then I have my notes here as a fold out. This is a new teacup, again, vintage, new to me that I just got. I love it. I've been drinking out of it all the time. I love the daisies. It's so pretty. And here's some books I got out of the library. It's a pile of mystery books. I decided to test out some mini eggs from the UK to see if they actually were better than the American ones. Um, I didn't have some American ones like to hand to compare them to, but I thought that they were maybe just only slightly better. But you know, they're not like fresh. I've had them for a while, so I don't know. Maybe they would be. Here are the flosses for our mystery stitch along, which I decided to see if I could sketch the other day. And then here is my ambassador badge that I decided to sketch to commemorate its arrival. I haven't put the any words in yet. Um, I wanted to add another couple things that came yesterday that I haven't added in the date. 
Um, so this is an unfinished page. But anyway, I'm having a lot of fun sketching this and keeping track of my life. So if it's something that you're interested in, <clears throat> um, I could recommend uh, Liz Steele's courses. I've taken the teacups course, the foundations course, the watercolor course, and I'm currently doing the edges course. She'll be offering a live run through of the teacups course again, I think in May. So I'll be re retaking it because I think I could use the practice that it's fun to st to sketch with other people from around the world. So um, kind of like a mystery stitch along that that aspect of the fun is like the same thing with this. Um, I've made some some online sketching friends and really enjoying it. And I go out to sketch too. Uh, I'm working on getting out to sketch in public more. I've got my little kit. So yeah, anyway, um, I'll put a link to Liz's stuff uh, below the video. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today. Please visit luminousfiberarts.com to purchase the pre-ordered pattern, fabric and floss for our mystery stitch along. Hope you'll join us this summer. It's going to be a blast. And I will be back very soon with another very fun announcement. Take care, friends.